Exactly. I've told y'all time and time again, no eating in class. Amen. And we told and you that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, see? <laughs> oh my gosh, Mr. Mickens, help him. Let me get this on my camera because, oh, dang, my phone died. Let me get my turbo charger out. <laughs> No, I know you know better than to try to eat and talk while eating a biscuit from Popier's Chicken. You know those biscuits so dry. Ha! Okay, my phone is back on. Let me capture this for the gram. Oh, man. Y'all just gonna let a brother die like that? Oh, my mouth was already dry. It just needed a, a little more spit. No home training at all. Well, saliva definitely would do the trick. Yeah, it's natural moisture. Well, it's more than just the moisture at work here. Your saliva contains an enzyme called amylase that helps to break down the food that we eat. Enzymes are special proteins that speed up chemical reactions by lowering activation energy. What's activation energy? Activation energy is the energy needed to start or to activate a chemical reaction. Oh, duh. So essentially, without enzymes, none of the chemical reactions in our bodies would ever start. All right, cool. Lesson is done. Complete. Let's go. No, uh, enzymes lower the activation energy. They lower the amount of energy needed to start or to catalyze the reaction. Oh, uh, yeah, we heard you the first time. Enzymes provide the activation energy for a reaction. I, no. See, I did not say that enzymes provide the activation energy. They lower the activation energy for the reaction to start. <sighs> this is a very common misconception. Let's see if I can explain this better. Your phone died at the beginning of class, right? And then you got out your fancy turbo boost charger. Yep. Can't live without it. I'm telling you. Well, could you have just used the regular old charger that the phone came with? Yeah, but the regular chargers take forever to get the phone charged. Like, you'll be sitting there waiting for like five minutes for your phone to turn back on. Yeah, the turbo charger is much faster. Yeah, I think I see exactly where this is going. Oh, so the turbo charger lowers the amount of energy required to get the phone back on. There we go, right? So your phone would still charge without the turbocharger. It just takes more energy to get it to turn back on. Same with enzymes. Most reactions in our bodies could still occur. It would just happen much slower and it would be less efficient because it would take more energy to start them. However, with enzymes, they lower that amount of energy needed to get those reactions moving or activated. Um, wait, hey, who told you you could use my charger? Well, calm down. I can't even use it. It won't fit in my phone. <sighs> we already learned that we need food for energy. And we get that energy from certain macromolecules in our food. <laughs> but how does our food go from this to this? <laughs> Oh, digestion. Wait, could you hear me over all of that noise? Yeah, it sounds like someone is having some issues with that um, right now. Uh, man, I'm lactose intolerant. <sighs> Wait now, so you're going to eat biscuits with dairy products in class? Well, I didn't see any type of butter on those dry biscuits, but um, what does that mean again to be lactose intolerant? Well... It has something to do with the fact that our bodies have specific enzymes to help digest specific things. We have pepsin and trypsin to break down meats, lipase to break down fats, <laughs> and amylase and lactase to break down sugars, like a carb found in dairy called lactose. So, Makai, if your body doesn't produce enough lactase, the enzyme, to break down lactose, it actually just remains there digesting very slowly and causes a lot of discomfort. Well, you said amylase can break down sugars too. Can it just break down lactose? Nope. 
those enzymes break down specific foods because the enzymes themselves are very specific. Enzymes have a special site called the active site where they bind to whatever they are breaking down. These are called the substrates. It works like a lock and a key or even like phone chargers. So Matt, you couldn't use her phone charger because the port on your phone is not specific to that charger. So the enzyme and the substrates bind together and can adjust to ensure a perfect match. This is called induced fit. The reaction occurs and then the product or the products leave the enzyme for other substrates to bind. All right, y'all are doing way too much for me today. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little impatient. Um, I felt it would go even faster if I plugged it into the other charger. Oh, did it melt? <laughs> well, great job. It won't work on my phone or your phone now. <laughs> How can I go on? <laughs> Remember when the pH of your school garden changed and the plants wouldn't grow? It's not just because the pH was low, but it, but the pH most likely caused some vital enzyme that affects plant growth to denature or change shape. Enzymes are affected by many changes, especially changes in temperature or pH. Some enzymes stay dormant and aren't even activated until the temperature or pH reaches its optimum. At what temperature does this enzyme work best? Mm, looks to be about 40 or 42 degrees. So what must have changed about the enzyme when the temperature was above 60 degrees or even below zero degrees? Um, the enzymes died? Well. They aren't living things, right? Even though I know we tend to speak about them like they are, but think about the structure of enzymes or think about that burnt up charger over there. Oh, it's active site must have changed shape. Right. The enzyme was denatured. Oh, and if the active site can't bind to the substrate, the enzyme won't work. There we go. Absolutely. Here, girl, you can just use my adapter to get your phone to work. It'll change the port to work on your phone. Oh, wow. I never thought an Android user would be good for anything. Thank you so much. Whoa, wait. Hey, Androids are the best phone. You, Man, you always trip. Well, there are many things that can affect enzymes, just like that adapter. Cofactors and coenzymes can help a needed substrate to bind to an enzyme, but they could also inhibit enzyme activity as well, along with other substrates of similar composition. But we don't need to go that deep. What's most important is that you understand how enzymes work to speed up vital reactions that occur in living things. Yes, digestion is one of them, but think about the two processes I'm sure your teacher has discussed. Yep, those two. These two fundamental processes are literally the reason we're all sitting here today. And they'd move so slowly, or not at all, without enzymes, hard at work within the fundamental unit of all living things, the cell. Check out our website for a cool lab activity, or it could be used as a demo, that discusses this topic, and we have so much more at crsi.org. <laughs> All right, I'm leaving. Uh, close the door behind y'all when the bell rings, okay?